Thank you, and uh, uh, it is uh, it is a uh, well, great honor and a pleasure to speak at the conference uh, in honor of Italy's uh, Thursday. Also, thanks here for organizing. Uh, let me start with uh, a quick uh, story. Uh, in December, there was a conference in uh, Oberwald of public uh, geometry. Vitaly was there. I was there, and uh, on the first day, uh, when Vitaly saw me, he approached me and said, "Dima, happy birthday." Uh, here is a, a gift, and he gave me a book uh, by him and Herman Koenig with a dedication that was just published. And I was very uh, touched and uh, happy, so, so touched that I forgot that it wasn't actually my birthday today. <laughs> it was the birthday of Theran Rotom. Uh, my birthday was uh, a couple of days later. <laughs> but, uh, that was uh, very uh, nice. Uh, okay, so uh, let's uh, start. Uh, the topic of my talk is basically the same as uh, Simon's talk from yesterday, intrinsic volumes, but I will be taking them in a very different direction. So uh, let's start uh, from the end uh, with some applications. So let's consider Romanian manifolds uh, without boundary. So uh, some uh, terminology. We will say that uh, kappa, which is an assignment that to any Romanian manifold associates a measure on it, is a localization of the Euler characteristic i. If uh, it is a local invariant, namely whenever you have an isometric uh, open embedding, uh, the push forward of the measure on the smaller manifold is the restriction of the measure of the larger one, so it's local invariant, and it should globalize to the Euler characteristic. So the integral of the measure should be the Euler characteristic whenever m is compact. And of course, you know what I'm talking about. For instance, uh, Gauss's theorem Gregian tells us that if uh, we consider Romanian surfaces, then the Gaussian curvature is such a localization. And we can do it in any dimension. Uh, if you consider the Riemann curvature tensor, which you can think of as a linear transformation from two forms uh, to themselves, and you take its uh, Pfaffian, uh, which is uh, essentially the square root of the determinant, this is a measure that you can construct out of the uh, curvature tensor, then the uh, chern gauss bonnet uh, weyl ollendorfer theorem tells us that uh, this measure, properly normalized, is a such a localization of the Euler curve. What if we uh, talk about pseudo-Romanian manifolds? By pseudo-Romanian, I mean that the metric is not positive definite, but rather not degenerate of some fixed signature. So there are p positive signs and uh, q uh, negative to the metric? Well, in that case, you can do essentially the same thing. Uh, if both P and Q are even, then you again take the Pfaffian, you multiply it by some number that depends on the signature. And this is uh, such a localization. If either P or Q are odd, then zero is good enough. It's uh, well known that in such cases, the other characteristic is going to be zero. What to do if the metric can change signature? Well, uh, this is uh, an exotic uh, setting in a way, so maybe let me start by giving some motivation for considering such uh, strange objects. So uh, when uh, such uh, metrics can appear, for instance, if you're interested in submanifolds of pseudo-Romanian manifold, usually they would inherit not a pseudo-Romanian metric, but rather a signature changing metric. Uh, another natural construction is start with a function and take its Hessian and use it as a metric. If you want to increase the generality, uh, then you should be considering also uh, such uh, methods. Uh, uh, this construction appears in uh, affine differential geometry, for instance. 
maybe it's better not to call it a metric at all, but rather think of two tensors. For instance, ratio tensors of uh, nice uh, affine curvatures on manifolds are such a symmetric uh, tensor, again, uh, without any uh, curvature restriction, and uh, maybe some real life, in a way, uh, motivation comes from physics where such manifolds appear in some uh, areas like uh, quantum gravity, cosmology, and uh, optics. And there is some uh, past uh, work, uh, a bit sporadic, but nevertheless, uh, on the differential geometry of such manifolds, but one should say that it's quite restricted. For instance, let me just uh, comment on the last one. It considers uh, two-dimensional submanifolds of three-dimensional Lorentz space and assumes uh, in the important uh, applications that the Gaussian curvature remains bounded, which is not the general case around the degenerate subset of the mid. Okay, uh, we, uh, on the other hand, uh, can work with a very uh, mild uh, restriction. Of course, you need some restriction. You can't expect to do anything with the zero metric. So uh, here is the restriction. We say that the metric is light cone regular if zero is a regular value of the metric when considered as a function on the tangent bundle without the zeros. Uh, some examples include pseudo-Romanian manifolds, uh, as well as a generic submanifold of pseudo-Romanian manifolds. Has this property, a particular, a specific example is, uh, say, the sphere in, in uh, Lorentz three-dimensional space. So the light cone cuts out those two caps, which are Romanian, and there is a ring which is Lorentzian. Or you can write some formulas in R2 and uh, get all kinds of pictures of signatures. So you see that this definition is quite versatile. It a manifold can be light cone regular in uh, many different ways. Uh, so let me quickly remind you of the definition of the Gaussian curvature, uh, but in a strange way, a bit. Uh, soon I will explain why I do that. Uh, so we start with the surface in R4, and uh, S3 is the unit sphere, and uh, we let an M be the unit normal bundle, so a point on the manifold, together with the unit orthogonal vector, so over every point there is such a circle. So an M is a three-dimensional manifold uh, here, and we have those two projections to the manifold into the sphere. And of course, we have the volume on the sphere. We use this new map to pull it to the normal bundle, and then we push it forward to M uh, here, so we do it here, and we get uh, some measure on the manifold, call it kappa zero, and it's easy to see, compute that it's just the Gaussian curvature times the uh, area measure. Uh, now uh, I'm going to adjust this construction. I'm replacing M with the light cone regular manifold, and I'm replacing R4 with R2, 2 with the standard uh, flat metric. So this is why I started with a four-dimensional manifold uh, uh, space, because uh, if uh, the light cone regular metric has a point where the metric vanishes, which can be the case, then there is no hope to embed it in R3, or R21, rather. It does not have uh, planes where the metric vanishes. So this is the smallest uh, place where you can hope to embed. And we have to replace the Euclidean sphere. There's no more Euclidean structure with something else. So we consider just the space of directions. In R2, it's still the sphere. A bit more abstract speaking about. Uh, and uh, the normal bundle is the same, except the vector is now a direction, which is perpendicular to our surface, and uh, the diagram is the same, except we must replace the measure with something else, so the something else is lambda zero on this three-dimensional sphere, and uh, it's not a measure, it's a distribution, and it takes complex values, but it's invariant under isometries, and then we do the same thing, we pull back this distribution to nm, we push forward to m2, and we end up with some kappa zero m, which is a distribution on m. Distribution is a, a dual function, a, a linear functional on smooth. I didn't define it yet in a moment. It lives on S3, on uh, the oriented projectivization of R2 which is the sphere. 
Um, okay, so we produce some distribution on our manifold. And uh, at non-degenerate point, it's going to be proportional to the Gaussian curvature, which is well defined for so the Riemannian manifolds times the area uh, element times some uh, complex factor, which depends on the signature at the point. So uh, Q is the negative index. And here is an explicit formula for lambda zero. Uh, it has a well, real and imaginary part. This is the derivative of the delta function. Uh, so uh, at this point, uh, the reason that we work with complex value distribution is uh, a bit uh, not so important. What uh, is important that in fact the space of isometry and variant distribution, real values, is two dimensional and spanned by the real and the imaginary part. So um, encoding it as a complex value to measure is just a way to keep track of two different Gaussian curvatures. Uh, okay. You, uh, right, so M has some non-degenerate points and some degenerate. Right? We have a metric that can change signature. So there are some open subsets where the metric is non-degenerate. And you can look there. And the distribution there is uh, going to be a smooth measure. And it's going No, 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 no. Sorry. I'm starting with, I start by defining something on S3Q. Here it is. It's a distribution on S through Q. But X belongs to S through Q. X belongs to uh, S through Q, yes. Uh, yes, uh, so to, yes, uh, very good. Uh, so uh, to uh, you I choose, uh, you use also the standard Euclidean structure to identify this S through Q with S3. And then this thing, which is a measure on the usual Euclidean S3, is identified with the measure here. So it's a distribution. To write it explicitly, you have to use some Euclidean structure. And this is it. OK? Uh, OK, so we produced some uh, distribution on uh, the surface. And uh, here is our first uh, theorem. Uh, it's a version of theorem aggregium for a light cone regular matrix. And uh, I forgot to say it explicitly. All, everything is a joint work with Andreas Bernick and Phil Solanas. Uh, yes, uh, so uh, this thing that we produced is uh, a local uh, invariant which uh, integrates to the Euler characteristic. So we uh, localized chi uh, for this case. Uh, and uh, another thing, uh, well, yes, and uh, we can do it in any dimension. Uh, so we, uh, for any dimension, we have uh, assignment kappa zero into complex valued distributions which localizes the Euler characteristic. And if you look at non-degenerate parts of the manifold, it coincides with the classical chern gauss integral. Now, there's two uh, things to uh, pay attention to. One is that the other characteristic is real valued. So this equation really is two equations. There is one, one Gaussian curvature that integrates to chi. There's another one that integrates to zero. Uh, another thing to pay attention to is that, well, if you study it, uh, you find that uh, the real part is supported uh, on this part of the manifold, those parts where the signature is like that, on the closure, the imaginary part on all the ones with the odd signatures. Uh, so somehow they uh, live separately, and uh, contrary to what one might, might expect, that, uh, that there will be some distribution on uh, every uh, signature. Uh, no, that's not the case. Uh, somehow, some signatures are just uh, married uh, together. Uh, okay, uh, so uh, let me remind you uh, a theorem of a while that appeared yesterday uh, in Simon Stock. If you take a Romanian manifold in some large Euclidean uh, space and consider the epsilon volume around it, uh, then uh, it's going to be a polynomial in epsilon if epsilon is small. And uh, the coefficients, uh, properly normalized, are called the intrinsic volumes. And remarkably, they only depend on the induced metric on the manifold. And they're given by integral over the manifold of certain quantities, so certain polynomials in the curvature center that are called lifshitz Killing curvature. That's just a formula for, for those. Uh, OK, well, the main example, the 
plus the most famous examples are the volume, mu n, the Euler characteristic mu zero, and uh, the n minus second one is the scalar curve. And uh, we, in fact, uh, generalize uh, all of those. So uh, for every k, we produce k homogeneous, homogeneous in the metric. Um, assignment to a manifold of a complex value distribution, which, uh, as before, restricts to the classical one at non-degenerate uh, subset. Uh, okay, uh, maybe you don't care about, uh, like, uh, about uh, manifolds that change signature. Let me give you a related but uh, different uh, question in a more uh, conventional uh, flavor. If you take a pseudo-Romanian manifold with boundary, what is its Euler characteristic? Well, uh, there's been a work uh, on that too. In all uh, cases, uh, with one exception, the uh, assumption was that the boundary of the manifold is non-degenerate, is uh, a union of pseudo-Romanian manifolds. The small exception also is uh, here, where uh, the boundary can also be uh, degenerate everywhere. And, uh, well, anyway, that's, uh, that's the uh, flavor of things. Uh, we don't need this assumption. Uh, what we can prove is that if you have such a manifold with boundary, and the boundary is a light cone regular, inherits light cone regular metric, which is a generic condition, then we have an explicit uh, chern gauss formula uh, with a boundary term, so lambda zero is an explicit distribution that is constructed on the boundary of such a uh, Okay, uh, so uh, up to this point, uh, you could explain all that to, to Gauss, and uh, maybe you should uh, tell him what you mean by distribution. And Gauss would, will be happy that his uh, theorem has, uh, uh, maybe he will, he will be happy to learn that his theorem has uh, such a useless uh, generalization. But uh, the, the proof is quite different. The proof uses uh, the language of relation theory uh, that uh, was uh, introduced by Simon Lesker some 15 years ago, relation theory and manifolds. Uh, uh, so, uh, very quickly, just the terminology. We are going to talk about compact uh, differential polyhedra, uh, P of M. And we're going to talk about the cost sphere bundle. So formally, you projectivize the cotangent bundle, but you can just think of the spheres in the cotangent bundle. And uh, for any uh, such uh, X, polyhedron, we uh, have its conormal cycle, which uh, consists of the conormal cones at all the points of X. So it's a subset of the cost sphere bundle, and it has some nice properties regular properties. It's uh, n minus 1 dimensional, regardless of the dimension of x. And uh, it is a Lipschitz uh, uh, So uh, here is a definition which is due to uh, Alaskar and Fon. We start with uh, two things, uh, a measure on the manifold, a smooth measure, and an n minus form, n minus 1 form on the cos sphere bundle. And out of this we produce two things, uh, a smooth valuation. Uh, which is a function on the polyhedra with values in R given by this sum of integrals. That's the interior term. That's the boundary term. And uh, a smooth curvature measure, which is, uh, again, a function on the polyhedra, which produces measures. Uh, and uh, essentially by the same formula. So you integrate, uh, so you take this function f, and to integrate f against this measure phi of x, you have to integrate over x this product and over the conormal cycle this product. Uh, very, uh, very natural. And uh, two things to keep in mind. One is that uh, it is evaluation in the classical sense, namely uh, the inclusion-exclusion relation uh, is satisfied whenever everything uh, is well defined on both sides. And uh, another, which is very important for us, is that uh, there is a natural operation of restriction. So if you have one manifold embedded in another, uh, there is a natural pullback from the curvature measures here to the curvature measures uh, there. And uh, that's uh, something we strongly use. Uh, OK, so kappa uh, k, let me remind you, is the Lipschitz killing uh, curvature on the manifold. And here is the theorem of Chern from 45. Uh, he proved 
bit different generality, uh, that uh, if you start with a Romanian manifold, then there is some canonic form on the cos here bundle, such that whenever x is a polyhedron, then its Euler characteristic is given precisely by the kind of uh, expression we just saw, the integral over x of the Chern-Gauss integrand plus the integral over the conormal cycle of this particular form. So that's one presentation of the Euler characteristic as evolution, and we uh, go ahead and define the zero slipshit scale and curvature measure, lambda zero, by those two forms. So uh, its globalization, which means, well, it produces a measure for every x, it's the integral of this measure, is the Euler characteristic. In other words, for every set in M, it has an Euler characteristic, but lambda zero localizes it. It gives some measure, which is spread over this body and whose integral is the Euler characteristic of this one. And uh, something similar happens for all Lipschitz healing uh, curvature. You can find a form and produce a curvature measure lambda k, which has the uh, corresponding name of case Lipschitz healing curvature measure. And its integral is the corresponding relation, which previously appeared under the name of intrinsic volume. Uh, very good. So. Uh, here is Alaska's uh, in interpretation of the theorem, which is uh, due to well. So for every k, there is a k homogeneous in the metric uh, assignment lambda k, which takes a Riemannian manifold and produces a curvature measure on it in such a way that whenever we have an isometric embedding, I no longer say open isometric embedding. Now dimensions can change. Whenever we have an uh, isometric embedding, uh, the restriction is uh, what it is. Uh, in the pseudo-Romanian setting, uh, it's not uh, straightforward. There are challenges uh, of, uh, in, in uh, generalizing to this language, and that's actually what uh, this talk is, is about. Uh, so uh, the challenges first appear when you try to write chern gauss bonnet theorem with a boundary term. And uh, the challenges are uh, summarized here. Uh, it turns out that you must replace the smooth forms by uh, distributions uh, or uh, Instead of forms, you have to write currents. And uh, related to that is that you no longer can restrict to any submanifold that you like. You have to be careful. You have to tiptoe your way such that things that you do are uh, well-defined. Uh, distributions are rather fragile uh, options. Uh, OK, so uh, anticipating that, let me introduce a, a definition, a generalized curvature measure, written C minus infinity, is essentially the same thing. It's a functional from uh, subset, uh, from polyhedra on M to distributions this time on the manifold, uh, well, it's partially defined. Uh, this time, both mu and omega are uh, distributions, and uh, it's only defined for sets X uh, such that the right-hand side makes sense, such that you are actually able to integrate this distribution over the set, and uh, similarly uh, here. Okay, uh, and uh, here is the theorem that we can prove that uh, for any k, uh, there is, uh, just as before, an uh, assignment, lambda k, this time to uh, generalized uh, curvature measures, which are complex valued, which commutes with uh, isometric embeddings. So this, this uh, talks about all pseudo-Romanian manifolds of arbitrary but fixed uh, signature. Uh, right, so uh, any manifold has a, some signature. I don't talk about metrics with changing signature right now. Uh, and moreover, we have a uniqueness a result that any such assignment uh, which uh, commutes with isometric embeddings uh, must be some linear combination of uh, the lambda case and their uh, conjugate. Uh, okay. And uh, a couple of properties. Of, of course, uh, it extends the Romanian uh, one. Uh, it has this uh, homogeneity property. Positive homogeneity is not surprising, but uh, it, now that you are allowed to multiply by minus one, of course, you want to know what happens. Well, the lambdas get conjugated. That's nice, and there is some imaginary factor uh, coming in. And uh, if you consider the top degree lambda for a given manifold, then you get the volume as you would expect with some imaginary factor again. So those two properties are the main pur uh, purpose of the complex notation. They make things look nice. And well, there is another motivation that I don't want to talk about, uh, but that's uh, uh, a, a motivation. And uh, in 
uh, in line uh, of what we've seen, we also have the Chern integral formula in this setting, uh, namely lambda zero globalizes to the Euler characteristic. For any sufficiently nice uh, polyhedron, it produces a, a distribution on, uh, supported on it, which integrates to the Euler characteristic. In particular, we can get a Chern Gauss Kuhn theorem with boundary. Uh, okay, uh, I have a few minutes, very good. Uh, so, uh, as I said before, uh, you can't evaluate or restrict those curvature measures to anything you like. You have to select uh, your submanifolds ca carefully. So, how carefully? Well, uh, we will say that a submanifold is like on transversal uh, if it uh, intersects, if its normal cycle, sorry, intersects the light cone transversally in the sphere bundle. What is the light cone? It's the collection of the null directions. It is typically a hypersurface unless uh, the metric is positive definite or negative definite. Uh, okay, so that's a generic condition, very precise one. Examples of such submanifolds include any pseudo-Romanian submanifold as well as a generic perturbation of uh, any submanifold. Uh, and uh, it came to us as a surprise that actually LC transversality is an intrinsic property. So it took us quite, quite some time to realize that. Once you realize that proving it is not that difficult, but uh, still it's, uh, it's a very important fact that a submanifold of a pseudo Romanian manifold is LC transversal if and only if the induced metric is light on regular. And uh, that leads to this uh, proposition uh, definition. Uh, that allows us to define lexical killing curvatures for arbitrary uh, light cone regular manifolds, uh, namely just embedded somehow in a pseudo Romanian manifold, take the Lipschitz killing curvature there, restrict it, and what you get will not depend on the embedding. Uh, the proof at this point, if you believe everything else is quite trivial, just consider to embed it, take some much larger pseudo Romanian manifold that contains everything isometrically, and just restrict its Lipschitz killing curvature steps in two different ways. Restriction is not a problem because in restrictability is an intrinsic property of this. Uh, okay, and as a corollary, we uh, get uh, all the uh, things I mentioned earlier, together with the chern gauss theorem for compact line cone regular manifold with a generic bound. Presently, I have time for uh, some uh, highlights from the proof. Well, the proof actually has uh, three, uh, three parts. Uh, the easiest part is the uniqueness, because we're, you know, the property that lambda k satisfies is very strong, it, and using the Nash theorem, it immediately reduces to considering only flat spaces. So you need to give some Hadwiger theorem in flat space, and uh, using uh, uh, Alastair's uh, theory and uh, other results, uh, it, this is all almost uh, a routine uh, to do. Uh, well, the, the second part is constructing those uh, lambda case on the pseudo Romanian manifold. And uh, here uh, you start with Chern's approach, which is using Cartan apparatus, uh, and you manage to produce basically the same uh, approach, produces forms outside of the null directions. And now you have to patch them together somehow. And the way to do it is to very carefully uh, select Romanian uh, metric, and we should, well, very carefully select the Romanian metric, and to express uh, everything in its terms. And if you do it right, you, the relevant parts turn out to be smooth times some homogeneous function. And uh, they are all homogeneous function in the same variable sigma. And multiplying two homogeneous things is, uh, well, straightforward. You know what it should be, and then you prove that what it should be has the properties that you need. Uh, I have a minute. Uh, well, the hardest part is uh, actually proving while theorem, which is that the restriction is uh, uh, respected. And here, uh, modulo uh, everything while did, uh, the proof essentially boils down to the computation of a certain uh, distributional integral. Uh, uh, I will skip uh, the details, just that f, uh, let me tell you that f is a distribution, so somehow you can't just change variables, you have to do something else, and uh, thanks to uh, 
a very fruitful exchange with uh, both Kartik. We were able to reduce this computation by exactly 95%. Uh, okay, so uh, thank you and happy birthday, Vitaly. have to uh, define the lambda case uh, with coefficients that depend on the signatures and uh, by their you their functorial things so they should somehow depend on what they eat the way they depend uh, is uh, hidden in the construction but once you define them, it, it's not obvious that you can do it without dependence on signature that's a, that's a non-trivial thing <laughs> what was your life? It's a very good question.